Christ in thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy. There is none beside thee. Perfect in power, in love and purity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. That opening greeting is pretty much the second reading for today, and the theme of today's Mass, the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, the Sunday after Pentecost. So let's plunge ourselves into that mystery, and not just meditate on it, but live it, not only during this liturgy, but throughout our lives. Let's begin by invoking the Trinity and the Trinity's mercy. God, our Father, you are our creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you are the paraclete. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heaven God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Have receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy. 
God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore the unity powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading today is from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, if I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading is the conclusion of the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 
Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in previous homilies on this Sunday, Trinity, I've spent a lot of time explaining the mystery of the Trinity and how it's a living mystery that we need to be inserted into and in trying to understand it. I just want to check in with a few of those things. First of all, remember that too often in the way we imagine God is as a king sitting on a throne, separate, you know, aloof, you know, even if the Son and the Spirit are down there somewhere too. Uh, more often it's just a, a monarchical, whether Jesus is the king or the Father is the king. Remember, God is a verb. God does just not sit up there, you know, with some kind of complacency. God is a living dance in God's self, you know. A perichoresis, as the Greek fathers used to say, do say. Um, so it's an exchange, a constant energy exchange of life, a pouring out. The Father pours himself out into the Son. The, son and the Father and the Son breathe forth the Spirit, and it's uh, from the Father to the Father, already within the bosom of the Father. And what that energy is, what that spirit is, is the spirit of love. Of course, of unity, peace, but above all, of love. That's the dynamism of God, who is love. So God is this pouring out, this endless pouring out of self-sacrificial love. And that's that relationship, that pouring out relationship in the Trinity and in, to, with the world is, is, is what it's all about. Karl Rahner pointed out, you know, many decades ago that, you know, um, the very thing that we think makes us persons, you know, in our individualistic culture today, which is, you know, I have our own will and my own intelligence and my own plan and my own being, is exactly what does not constitute person in God. In God, there's one intelligence, one will, one being, although even that, as has been pointed out, is kind of an anthropomorphism. It's not exactly how it works. But all those things are just one, there's just one God. What makes the persons, as Thomas Aquinas pointed out very elegantly 
centuries ago is that is the relationship their subsistent relations their substantial relations the relationship themselves are the persons so that means and it's very important today if, as never before if we want to truly be persons we have to be in relation our relationship the quality of our relationship defines the quality of our personhood just as in God. And if we're called to share in God's personhood, to share in God's life, created in the image of God, then that, that relation must be one of self-sacrificial love, just as Jesus poured himself, emptied himself, as Paul says, in the incarnation, and then emptied himself again, as he says to the Philippians, to die on the cross, to be, share our very uh, death, lead, to lead us to life so must our personhood be defined, defined by our self-sacrificial love, our pouring out of ourselves in love. Mm -hmm. Now that is exactly what uh, we have already in the, in, the, in the first reading. God defines himself, so to speak, you know, as rahum v'chanum. It's a very rich phrase, which means uh, as we saw, uh, uh, merciful and gracious. Uh, the word merciful coming from the word for womb in, in Hebrew. You know, this maternal as well as paternal graciousness and love. Rich, abounding, multifarious, abundant in uh, mercy, uh, in faithfulness, as it goes on to say. That's who God is. And we see it also very clearly in the gospel today, this this re resume, if you like, of the gospel, as it has been called, these John 3, 16 to 18. God so loved the world. God can't help God's self because God is love. So of course God loves the world. What else? God creates it in love. God redeems it in love. God brings it to fulfillment in love through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That he gave his only son, indeed, he poured out this, he poured out his love, his son to us, so that we may pour out our lives and love in Christ and with Christ that whoever believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. That is eternal life, that love in this world and the next. So obviously God didn't send his son to condemn the world, that's not what God does, but that the world might be saved you know, to share that life. Whoever believes will not be condemned. Now that just doesn't mean, oh, I accept Jesus as my savior. Jesus himself says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my father, which basically is to love. As Jesus says, I give you one new commandment to love one another as I have loved you. And as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. It's all just sharing in that one love. Whoever does not believe has already been condemned. Well, this is, this is reality. That self-sacrificial love, that pouring out of love is reality in God and in the world. So if you don't live that, well, <laughs> call that being condemned, if you will. I mean, you're outside of the sphere of reality. I mean, it's, what a better word for the devil than that, you know. And believing in the name of the only Son of God, as it concludes, means to live that love that he is. Mm -hmm. So this is very, very important. I hope you can see how this applies to our current situation. You know, there are hundreds of beautiful testimonies out there from all sorts of organizations and people about the current situation. But this, these readings today are sparkling gems to encourage us to, to live at being in the truth of who God is and who we really are in this world, a pouring out of love and communion, like the Trinity, relationship, relationship defines the quality of our personhood. So let's look at each word of that second reading from which we got that uh, opening greeting. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Jesus says this, he says a couple of times in his closing Last Supper discourse, these things I have said to you that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete because what greater joy is, is there than this dance of love, which the whole universe is and which we're called to share with one another. Our planet should be a dance of love, a joyful dance, because that's where joy comes from. So rejoice. <laughs> Pretty much a lot there in that one single word. 
Mend your ways, stiff-necked people, to use the phrase from the first reading. We got plenty of that. Or necks that are knelt upon. So we need to open our hearts and our minds to mend our ways. Literally, literally the word means be, be equipped, you know, be, be properly set up. Colloquially, get your act together. Get your act together. Who are we really supposed to be? Not just as Americans, but as Christians, as human beings, as children of God. Mend your ways. Get with the program. Get with the dance of love and relationship, which is inclusive of all. Just as God's love is inclusive of all on whatever planet, certainly everyone on this planet and everything on this planet. You're in relationship and you're defined, your life is defined by the quality of those relationships of love and joy and self-sacrificial pouring out. Hmm? Encourage one another. Wow. That word comes up a lot in St. Paul and in the New Testament. Uh, Parakalesis, which means, well, encourage one another, console one another. Parakalesis is the same word from which we get paraclete. Paraclete is the consoler, the counselor, the one who is literally called alongside parakletos to defend you. So that's what we need to do for each other, to console one another, to encourage one another, to counsel one another, to call ourselves alongside, to stand with one another, to defend one another against all injustice and all oppression. A lot in that one word, eh? Are we going to take it seriously or whether are we going to allow the spirit, the paraclete, to fill us with his own life and love, the spirit of, of Jesus to fill us with Jesus' own life and love, the self-sacrificial, self-sacrificial love which brings us all together in unity. I hope you're holding on here. The next word is agree with one another. Literally, think the one thing. Think one thing. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to agree on everything politically or theologically or whatever, but it does mean that our fundamental attitude should be one of total agreement. One thing. The one thing being relationships of self-sacrificial love. That's what we need to think on, the one thing that we need to agree on as human beings and as Christians, that we pour ourselves out for one another in relationships of love and self-sacrifice. To, so agree with one another. We're not finished. Another word. It's all, each one of these is just one word in Greek. Live in peace. Wow. Live in peace. It's the word peace, Irene. We get the proper name Irene from that. Irene means, it, and it's made, it turned into a verb. So it's like peace out or be peace. Don't just live in, in peace, but be peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. And how do you make peace? By welcoming and encouraging and standing with and defending and counseling and consoling and pouring yourselves out to prove the quality of your relationships of love with everyone and everything. Obviously, we can't do that on our own. We need to have our hearts softened and our necks softened so that we can be open to channels of the Holy Spirit of love. And then, Paul says, the God of love and peace will be with you. Of course, we know God is love. Peace, fruit of the Spirit. If you are in love with everyone and everything, you're at peace. But if you're in conflict with anyone or anything, you're not at peace. So wouldn't you rather be at peace? Greet one another with a holy kiss. Now that's a... (laughs) A lovely phrase. Uh, philema, the translated kiss here, it literally means things that show love, a, a mark of love. We need more kisses, you know. We need more embraces. We need more hugs. Maybe not, not during COVID, but of the heart. We need to welcome one another with open arms, or at least open hearts during this time. Greeting one another, welcoming one another, recognizing one another as brothers and sisters. And all the holy ones greet you. That's what it means to be holy. If you're like God, you're holy. If you're loving like God and living like God, then you're holy. 
And then finally, the greeting, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's his grace, the grace of being able to love and share his life. And the love of God, the love of the Father, who is love, okay? And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Wow. We say the spirit of unity, of peace, of bringing people together in love. Uh, the fellowship, koinonia in Greek, it's a very famous word in theology, even in liturgy, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the communion of the Holy Spirit. We say we, want, we, say we miss communion. We want to go to communion again. Well, start now. Be in communion with Jesus and his Spirit and with the Father and with one another. It's what it's all for, to make the one bread makes us one body. So we're in communion as the one body. So make that a spiritual communion with all the oppressed people now, with everyone, your brothers and sisters. The first, a few verses of the first letter of St. John say that, you know, uh, we say this, that we say that, preach this to you, the word of life, so that you may have fellowship with us, koinonia. And our fellowship, it goes on to say, is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So remember, our fellowship, our sharing, our communion is first of all with God and his Trinitarian life of love, and then with one another, because we all share in that. We're all subsumed into it. And St. John concludes the paragraph by saying, and we say this to you so that our joy or your joy may be full, which again is what Jesus promised, right? I say all this to you that my joy may be in you and your joy may be full. And just as we know that the Trinity comes from unity and returns to unity, one God, that dance of love, so are we called to be one, that was Jesus' fondest wish and the one he expressed last of all in the very end of chapter 17 of John. You know. Father, it is my desire that all may be one, those who believe in me, that all may be one, uh, that, as, that they may be one in us, you and me, and, uh, and as I am in you and you are in me, that they may be in us. Hmm? that the world may believe that you sent me. If we really do share this unity of love, that will be a testimony to the world. And he goes on to say, as you and me and I and them, that they may be made perfectly one. We just talked about thinking the same thing, thinking one thing. Well, this is the unity of life that we're all called to share, hmm? that fellowship, hmm? so that all may be one. That's our goal not just e pluribus unum, one out of many, the motto of the United States, but it should be our motto as planetary citizens and it should be our motto above all as Christians, to share the unity of God by the quality of our relationship of love, relationships of love which create unity and express unity. So if you want to be real persons, if you want to be true Christians, then let us share a self-sacrificial love of community, communion, and unity, which defends, consoles, stands by, embraces, welcomes, accepts one another as brothers and sisters, greeting one another with a holy kiss. Everybody towards everybody. That's our privilege and our joy, our joy indeed. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. So let's profess our faith in the Trinity who shares God's own life with us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who spoke through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray in these very difficult times. Let us pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, that they may be safe and may recover. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who are suffering from the virus of racism, those who have the virus and who are racist, and pray for all those who suffer from the racism and are oppressed by it, that they may recover, that we may recover from our racism. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for all those who have died of the virus and for all those who mourn them, that they may enter the fullness of divine life. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for all those who have died from racism. George Floyd and Ahmed Arbery and Breonna Taylor and so many others. And pray for all those who mourn for them, that they may share the fullness of divine life. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for a swift find, finding of a vaccine to cure the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for a quick cure to racism, that we all may church our hearts and have the Spirit transform our hearts, make them like the heart of Jesus, make them like the heart of God, who wills that all may be loved and saved by love. We pray to the Lord. And let us finally pray for the whole planet, that we may come together in unity, and that we know may no longer be separated and uh, not think the same thing in terms of nationalities, in terms of race, in terms of religion, in terms of culture, in terms of gender and sexual orientation, that we may truly welcome and love one another uh, uh, as God does and accepts and welcomes, we pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you reveal to us the face of God, self-sacrificial love, welcome, peace, joy. May we always share that life fully and share it with others fully. For you are our Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. The fruit of the earth and the work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and the work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive the sacrifice from my hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit. So that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity of substance, and their equality of majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son, 
and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with her spouse, blessed Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace, extending it to those around us and indeed out to the whole world and beyond. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who makes us share the very life of the God of love in this sacrament. Blessed are we invited to his banquet. Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word 
and my soul shall be healed. So as I mentioned in my homily, our communion is with Jesus, but also with one another. So in this act of spiritual communion for you now, commune with everyone and everything in and through Christ. And not just for these couple minutes, at every minute. This Gregorian Antiphon is from the Gospel today. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. Sic Deus, dilexit mundum, mut filium sum unigenitum dare. Ut omnis qui credit in ipsum, non pereha. Sed habe ad vitam Let us pray. May receiving the sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to share the life of the Trinity, to share the life of all. Thanks be to God. in 
must be gone. Our prayer heart tend. Amen. Your people bless and give your word success. Strengthen your righteousness, Savior and friend. Come, holy comforter, your sacred witness bear in this glad hour. Your grace to us in part, now rule in every heart, never from us depart, Spirit of power, to the great morning dream, eternal praises be. Sovereign Majesty, may we in glory see and to eternity.